You gotta get speed. Demon speed. Speed's what we need. We need greasy, fast speed. What's up, everybody? In my last video, I did a thorough, in-depth review of the Extra PC. It's an operating system on a USB stick. It's really nothing new, but it's marketed what I feel like is towards an audience who doesn't really understand the tech world. And it's an audience that is wanting to enhance the speed of their PC, but they don't really understand how things work inside there. So in this video today, I'm gonna to talk about what you can do to really enhance your PC and speed it up, optimize it for speed, and uh, get what you can really get out of that money that you would have spent on the extra PC in a more efficient manner. Uh, with that being said, let's take a look at the four things that you can do right away to really enhance the speed of your PC. Now right away, the first thing that you can do to really speed up your PC is to install a lighter operating system. Windows is a bit of a resource hog, as is the Mac OS. Um, now I'm not saying that you should definitely switch to Linux, but if you can get away with it and if it does everything that you want it to do, you will see a tremendous speed boost from doing this. You can check out my last video at the end of that video. I'm going to leave a timestamp for that. I show you exactly how to install a Linux OS. All right, here's the PC that we're going to be taking a look at. This is the HP DC7800. It's the same machine that I used in my last video where I tested Windows Vista against the extra PC USB stick. It's about a 12-year-old machine and certainly not impressive at all by today's standards, but the first thing that you want to really understand about upgrading your PC is don't be afraid to tear into it. We're going to open this thing up and take a look inside. And right away, this is a pretty bare bones system. So we're gonna really talk about hardware now. Almost everything on a PC is plug and play. And first off, the easiest thing to replace with the biggest speed boost is gonna be your hard drive. That's this right here. This is a SATA hard drive. Most PCs are gonna have SATA connections in this day and age. There are two cables, a small one, and a power supply. This is an old style spinning platter hard drive. This has a series of magnetic disks that spin inside and that's how the data is stored. What we want to do is replace this with a solid state hard drive that basically uses sort of the same technology that's in a USB thumb drive. They're a lot faster than this thing right here. These are very easy to replace and um, basically you just plug this smaller cable into here and you plug this power supply cable into right there and it's good to go. Now what you're going to find is that when you replace this hard drive you're going to not have an operating system on there so you're going to have to install that on there and link in the description for how you go about doing that. I don't have a new solid state hard drive on hand. I have this one this is not what they normally look like. Now this is not a solid state hard drive. Um, this is a, a two and a half inch spinning platter hard drive out of a laptop. But basically uh, the solid state hard drive is going to look a lot like this, but it will be made of plastic probably. Um, <laughs> I had to take the case off of this one for a project where I needed, uh, I needed the extra space to fit this in what I was building. So that's why this one does not have a case, but basically as you see right here, as you see right here it does have the proper connectors. So I'm going to have to install this the same way and I'm going to have to get creative with how I mount this in here, but that is how you hook that up. I will probably just creatively mount that right here because this spot is plastic and um, I don't have to worry about any metal on metal, anything like that. Any kind of shorts I think will be just fine with uh, coming up with a way to mount that right there. And I've got a big blank spot on this drive where there's nothing to worry about there. So that's the trick with this machine is I really don't want to spend any money on it. I raided my parts pile to find the hardware that I have here. Next we have RAM. And RAM will sit in these slots back here. 
Uh, this has four RAM slots. Some PCs only have two. I've seen some that only have one, and some server class have eight or possibly even more. The way that RAM goes into these slots is lock pins here. They click in and out. Basically, your RAM just slides into there. And then you just push straight down until they both snap into place like that, and that's how you install your RAM. This machine came with uh, two gigs, but luckily I raided my parts pile, and I found where I can max this thing out to eight gigs. So I lucked out there. I'm just going to follow suit and install the other three sticks in these three slots here. All right, scrounging through my parts pile, here's the last piece of hardware that I found. Now this is a graphics card, and it's a common misconception that only gamers need graphics cards to play video games with. In all actuality, if you don't have a graphics card, what is going to happen is it's going to put more strain on your onboard system resources to uh, render your graphics. So putting one of these in, even if it's a lower end graphics card, will actually take some of that strain off of your system resources and in theory should speed your system up a little bit. To install your graphics card you're going to look for a slot that looks like this. This is a PCI Express slot and you'll have to remove one of these slots here that coincides with the PCI Express slot to fit the graphics card in. As soon as you've done that it's as simple as taking the graphics card lining it up with the PCI Express slot and pushing it into place. Now with all of this new hardware installed, I'm going to button her back up and we're going to see how she runs. All right, now that I got all of this new hardware installed in this machine, I'm going to go through and install a fresh installation of Lubuntu. Right now I'm booting Lubuntu off of a USB flash drive. Now from the desktop, I'm going to run the Lubuntu installer. This is going to install Lubuntu to the solid state hard drive that we just put in this machine. Everything should run a lot faster. I'm not going into great detail with what I'm doing here because basically it's a very simple process to follow. Just follow the on-screen prompts. Now we're getting to the installation portion and we should see that this installs pretty quickly. All right, so about 10 minutes later, the installation is done. We're going to reboot this machine. Now I'm going to do a fresh start, completely powered down, and see how long it takes for this operating system to boot up. And we're in. I don't think that's too bad for a 12-year-old machine. Let's see how the thing performs. Let's check out a couple news sites. Not bad. To show that I'm not partisan, we'll go to Fox News. loading pretty quick. And we'll check out some video playback on YouTube. Looks pretty good to me. We've got to keep in mind that my capture card is not the best in the world, so we are going to see a little bit of artifacting in these videos. Let's launch the Office application and see how quickly it loads up.
that was pretty good. Good enough for me. The solid state hard drive is definitely the biggest performance boost uh, out of everything that we've done to this. Overall, I'm very happy with this and it more than surpasses my expectations. So those are four quick, easy, and cheap methods you can use to speed up your PC. If you have any more ideas on what you can do to speed up your PC, let us know in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear what kind of things you've done to optimize and add speed to your PC. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.